Hello friends. I'm going to keep this video very casual and I'm going to stay in my bed because that's just the mood for today. I want to talk about how I became fully self-employed or honestly, I just want to talk about like my journey to where I am today because this is the mark of my one year anniversary of being self-employed and it's so exciting to think about that I was f able to do something like this for myself to like fully sustain myself doing what I love and like building my brand so I just kind of I want this to be like a casual like sharing of my stories and I also did a little Q and A button on Instagram and we got a lot of questions so I'm gonna answer a few of those at the end of the video um, but yeah let's let's begin so I may have talked about these things here and there like throughout my videos or like if you've been watching my vlogs from the beginning you probably can see this progression of how I slowly became self-employed I've been drawing since I was in elementary school and in elementary school I had this one best friend but she really inspired me to start arts because she was just like I would consider her a child like art prodigy and I felt like I admired her so much from the beginning and I really wanted to be just like her and so I made it my, I guess, life mission as a fifth grader to be the best artist that I can be. And so ever since then, I pretty much dedicated all my time to drawing. I remember I would carry a sketchbook with me wherever I went, um, whether it's going out to eat with family or like after school, if there's leftover time, I will be drawing. So I would draw almost every single day in a sketchbook and that was my life for the majority of it. And in around high school, I did slightly deviate from the idea of becoming an artist because I feel like back then there wasn't as much information about being self-employed artist. Artist was always referred to as being um, like a starving artist, like they don't make enough money to survive. And I feel like a lot of people around me, like mainly, I guess, um, the older generations would always think that, you know, artists or being an artist isn't like a path that's viable or like it's not a path that you're able to go on um, if you want to make money or make a living. And so with that in mind, I didn't really consider being a full-time artist until I guess later in my high school years. So I think around senior year, like early senior year, I decided like last minute, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna apply to art schools and I'm gonna see where that takes me. So I think I applied to about five art schools. Five art schools? I think in total I applied to seven schools. Majority were art schools, but there were some Cal State schools inside of that. Um, and I got into every single art school, surprisingly. And I think to me that just felt like a sign that I was able to do it because um, I worked I worked so hard on my portfolio for like that year um, I was very proud of it and the fact that I got in was like really surprising and I got scholarships so it even like furthered the idea of like this was meant to be like me being an artist is it just feels right and after those four years of college, um, I learned a lot about art and a lot about like the different paths you can take. You can be like an editorial illustrator, you can be an animator, there's so many things. Like, you can be product designer, graphic designer, there's like art as a category is so broad and so generic. There's also the business part of art that I feel like I wish I learned more about because I didn't know this is what I wanted to pursue but I think because my dad was like a small business owner from when I was really little I kind of took after him a little bit in like in terms of like oh I love packing like orders or I like to do this I like to do that I guess subconsciously I ended up here like a business owner and an illustrator at the same time um, but anyways yeah I graduated college and I decided that you know I had this whole plan for my life. When we graduated, we had to do like a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. And at the time, I didn't understand time itself, which is why I don't really believe in planning like that far ahead because a lot of the goals that I was trying to achieve 
Um, some of them I achieved within six months, some of them I achieved within one year, and because I didn't know how time really worked and how long time was, I was making these goals that weren't really like set in the right timeline, if that makes sense. Like, for example, one of my goals was to pay off student loans or something, and I thought it would take me like 10, 20 years to pay off student loans because I couldn't imagine like paying off such a large amount of money because I've never worked a full-time job. I've never earned income in that way. The only thing I've earned was like maybe 200 bucks a month from like teaching. So I thought it was gonna be really hard to make money as an artist. So my goals were all skewed and it didn't really make sense. So essentially like I wanted to find a job, right? I wanted to um, gain some experience in the workplace because I thought that's like that's like the right thing to do. Like I'll work five to ten years at a corporate job or something and learn all these things, and then maybe maybe one day I could be self-employed. I'll just have like maybe an easier time understanding how the world works then. And not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with like corporate jobs because sometimes I feel like. I'm really skewed towards like being self-employed, but I know that like a lot of people do work at a 9 to 5 and there is nothing wrong with that. I'm actually very envious of how like you guys have so much extra time at the end of the day to I guess pursue other hobbies and do other things and sometimes it feels like when you run your own business you're so like centered on growth and like the next biggest thing that you don't really focus on your health or like have any hobbies outside of that. But yeah, I ended up working the 9 to 5 and at first it was great, like I loved it, I loved the community. I honestly love working with startups or like small businesses because you're able to do like a little bit of everything and dabble in like a little bit of social media, a little bit of product design, a little bit of illustration, like I was learning like the whole spectrum of everything kind of related to what I was doing. Um, in art. So yeah, I worked as a designer for I want to say a year and I relocated with my company from California to Vegas around like I want to say like four or five months in we decided to all move to Vegas to because they wanted to expand and that was like the biggest change for me in my entire life and one of the things that I will never regret because I think that was the one jump start in my life that led to all these like chain reactions of things happening for me. Um, I think it was because I felt like I was able to overcome that one hurdle of leaving the safe space that I've been all 21 years of my life. This one place that I felt like I thought I was gonna live there until I was like at least 30 or 40, probably until even death. Like I thought that was like where I was gonna end up. I guess this move kind of showed me that there was so much out there in the world that I haven't even seen yet. Like my whole life was centered around high school and then college and you only see a certain amount of people, right? Like you only see the people that you meet in school and you just assume that that's your entire world and if something bad were to happen like within that ecosystem of however high school runs or however college runs, then your life is ruined, right? Like if you piss off one person, everyone's gonna know about it and your life is just over. And I thought that that city that I was living in was like, that was it. Like that was the extent of my life. And so I think after moving, um, I got, I gained this like newfound confidence and courage in myself that I never knew I had. I honestly was the most unconfident person that even I have ever met. Um, I thought I couldn't do a lot of things. I thought physically I was weak. I thought mentally I was dumb. Like I legitimately thought all these things of myself and I never had one good thing to say of myself back then when I was younger. And just being able to move to a whole new location you don't know any friends, you literally only know people from work. Um, you have to figure out, like, I didn't even know how to wash my own laundry. I didn't even know how to cook. Um, these were all things that I had to learn for myself. 
And I think because of that, I was starting to gain a lot of confidence in myself of doing new things, being able to tackle them just by starting little and ending up like branching out to bigger things. And so like after a year of working with the company I was working at, I kind of felt like I was at a point where like I couldn't handle both my side business and my side passions as well as being at a nine to five all the time. I was extremely burnt out. I was very, I guess, lifeless in a way. I felt like I had this whole passion and purpose that I wasn't able to achieve or work on because I was so drained from working. I'm gonna be completely uh, honest but when I quit my job, I wasn't even making that much money off of my business on the side. Um, it was just enough to survive, uh, to pay rent, to maybe buy some food. I was extremely scared, I was extremely nervous. And with enough motivation from a few people around me, I decided to quit. And I think I do have this tendency of being very rash with my decisions and kind of jumping the gun and just doing something when I feel truly passionate about it, which honestly sometimes isn't that smart, but because I had a little bit of reassurance from some people around me that have traveled the same route that I have, I think I was able to confidently know that even if something went wrong, I would be supported. And if anything were to be wrong, I also have my parents, um, which I'm really grateful that I'm still able to go back to them if I need to. So yeah, I quit. I also wanna talk a little bit about like how I started because I feel like a lot of you are curious of like how you wanna start your own path. You also want to possibly leave your nine to five or maybe add extra side income to whatever you're making now which is always a good idea. I feel like you shouldn't rely too much on the one income, especially with what we had witnessed this past year with how the pandemic suddenly hit and no one was really prepared. No one really knew what was happening. So I feel like it's always good to have multiple streams of income, you know, take a little bit from everywhere. And if one fails, at least you have the other ones to rely on. While I was working full time, I was also looking into making like stickers or like, little original paintings that I could sell. And the first way that you can, I guess, like gain traction is for me, I did a lot of like Inktobers or I did a lot of challenges where I could connect with a lot of other artists. I never had the intention of, I guess, blowing up on social media. And I think that's an important lesson to learn about social media is like, never go into it expecting something from it because a lot of it is algorithm based and you're gonna just be disappointed if you go into social media thinking like one day you're gonna just become super big if you just consistently post. Um, I think as long as you're true to yourself, you're being real with who you are and you're helping others along the way, I think that's like the best way to think about social media. But yeah, I was doing a lot of challenges on Instagram, like art challenges, which gained me more engagement on my posts rather than me just posting like a random homework assignment from college. And I think I participated in like two Inktobers and I met a lot of friends. I still remember like one of my first few like art friends on Instagram was just another Ada because we both loved Posca markers during Inktober and we were both doing Posca marker Inktobers. So I think that first connection was just so important to me and it led me to be more confident into making more friends, more confidence in just like being myself and talking to people online, which ultimately is like the most important thing to me. I'd rather have that than followers in the end. Like being able to have people to talk to, to relate to is so much more important. Pretty much started off that way and I started gaining a lot of traction on my accounts and a lot of people noticed. I also started vlogging a little bit after I graduated college just for fun. I've always wanted to do YouTube because I was watching a lot of YouTube videos growing up when I was in like middle school. I would look up to people like Audra Claire or Alyssa Mies. Like there are so many amazing artists and I wanted to be that, you know? Like 
because I didn't have the confidence of being myself in person in front of other people or just speaking up for myself, I felt like YouTube was this platform where I could truly open up and be myself without feeling like I'm trying to impress anyone or trying to... I don't know, it's just like, it feels like I can be myself because there's no one here except me and my camera but to you, it's me talking to you. It's, it's weird. I this whole parasocial relationship we have here is still can't imagine how that works but yeah i wanted to do youtube videos since middle school and so i finally got the courage to do that i took my savings and i bought my first camera which was a canon g7x mark ii and i used that camera for a while it's like all dinged up and banged up by now honestly you don't even need like a fancy camera or anything to start making videos but I think for me the motivation came from like I put down this investment into this camera this camera was gonna be the start of like all of my journey and hopefully it'll pay off one day and so once I bought that camera I knew like I had to make this work because I've already committed I paid $300 for this camera and at the time, $300 was a lot of money for me. And it just felt like if I didn't use it, I was wasting my money and my time. And ever since then, I think things just started growing because I was becoming more confident being myself on camera. I try to be as real on my channel as I can be because I think personally, I connect the best with people that are real on their videos. And so I kind of wanted to do the same for everyone else, I wanted to be that friend that you need if you're feeling lonely or sad or if you just need some background sound because I've always been very introverted and alone. Also because I have been living in this apartment alone for two years. So I grew this fondness with talking to the camera because I really didn't have too many people to talk to. These days I am making a lot more friends and it's definitely like making my mental health a lot better but before, yeah, I was I didn't have anything to do on the weekends. I had no friends. I had like no one. So on the weekends, I would just be filming, I would be vlogging and working on the side of my job. I started cutting stickers. I started printing prints by myself and selling those. So it was definitely a very humbling start. I didn't have a cry cut or a silhouette. I refused to get one because I do not like using machines and I would rather manually cut them by hand. And when I got enough traction, I decided to start investing in like larger batches of stickers from like sticker companies and manufacturers. And everything just kind of snowballed from there, um, which I am forever thankful and forever grateful that I even get to do this at such a young age. This has been my dream for my entire life. And now, I, now that I've achieved it, I feel like I need to figure out what's next. So I'm kind of in like this in-between spot of where I'm at. I kind of want to just live a little because I was hustling for the past like two years of my life and before that four years of my life because art school is very hard and I was very tired most of the time. So I'm trying to be a little easier on myself these days and just do things that make me happy. Uh, let's go to the questions, shall we? Let me just choose some. There's so many questions. How am I gonna do this? Okay, so um, Stephanie, which is from Hello Keston, I recently did a collaboration with her. I'll link it below if you want to check out the charms and prints that I made. But she asks me, how do you stay focused while creating amazing content plus balancing different projects? And the way I stay focused is solely just passion. I recently started to decline a lot of projects that didn't bring me joy or ones that I felt like I was solely doing those projects because I think I need the money because I learned that if you make space for things that you want to do, those things will pop up. But if you're constantly taking on projects that you're not that interested in, then you're never going to have space for yourself or the things you want to do. So I only choose projects to work on if I'm passionate about it or if I'm interested about it, if I want to learn something new and that one project will be able to teach me those skills. And yeah, that's how I, 
that's how I'm trying to stay focused these days, but I am a little distracted here and there. Kara Kanani asked me, what was the first thing you did after leaving your job slash felt like you needed to do? So the first thing I felt like I needed to do after I left my job was to figure out finances because this is something that I feel like a lot of women don't talk about but recently it's more of a thing that like a lot of female YouTubers are talking about like finances and budgeting and all that stuff and the first thing I thought I needed to do was okay, how am I gonna sustain myself? How am I going to save enough so that if everything comes tumbling down, I'm still able to support myself for a bit of time to figure everything out. That includes like calculating your budget, like what's the minimum you need to survive every single month, including rent, food, gas, utilities, everything inside, as well as like entertainment if you have Netflix and stuff like that. And just being able to keep a budget and use your money humbly at the beginning so that you know that you're able to survive. That was like the one thing that I was heavily focused on. Other than that, I guess it's a lot of research, doing research on what I wanted to do, looking at other artists, picking and choosing the things that they're doing that I also want to integrate into my work life. And that also includes a lot of just like self-care. I felt like because I was working for so long and I was burnt out, I needed to find a schedule that would keep me productive but also not let me burn out again as hard as I did while I was working pretty much two jobs. Rayleigh Arts asks me, how do you go about doing taxes? And right now I do my taxes through a CPA because I have no idea how to do taxes and I just need a professional to help me. And I pretty much on my end, I focus on um, keeping track of all my receipts. I have a whole spreadsheet that lists out all the income I'm getting, whether I got paid, where the receipt is, when I got paid, as well as like expenses. For example, buying stickers, buying packaging, writing down like how much I bought, keeping track of just like all these numbers. At around like when tax season is going on, um, the CPA will send you a form and you just fill it out. It's a very simple form and you send it back to him. He files it for you and that is it. That is the magic of hiring people to do work for you that you don't understand. But yeah, I don't know a lot about taxes. So I feel like if you need help with taxes, definitely go find someone that you can trust and feel comfortable like working with. Alyssa Mees, this is really funny because I just mentioned her. She was one of the people on YouTube that I looked up to a lot that made me want to start my channel, but she asked me, I'm currently also considering the same. So she's also trying to decide if she wants to become freelance right now or self-employed. Did you need to get an LLC or self-employment? I registered as being self-employed, um, a sole proprietorship but my CPA is recommending me to become an LLC. Honestly, it's been something I've been pushing off, but I heard you get a lot more tax deductions or like you save a lot more on taxes and I should do it, but you know, I'm just taking my days step by step. You could always just be like a sole proprietor to start off with and see where that takes you. Studio Maggie is asking me, how do you deal with the ebbs and flows in social media growth? Um, she wishes that numbers mattered less. Oh, I'm really sad that you're dealing with this because I had this whole phase of obsessing over numbers, obsessing over analytics, and just like my whole life was run by whether or not my posts were getting enough likes. If I was getting enough followers in a day, I literally would check my growth and if it was dropping, I would be depressed for like weeks and it just wasn't a healthy solution. So I do think like the best way for me is like taking time off social media or just not going on as often, like limiting your time on it. It definitely is something that every, I guess, social media person goes through. Um, and as artists, it's so much harder because we're not built to be making art for social media. Like art should be wonderful and beautiful in itself but social media has kind of stripped away all that meaning and focused it on just like the consistency of posting and that's your worth. Honestly, I would just say like, post when you wanna post, you know, engage when you feel like engaging. Don't feel like you owe social media anything. Just do you and 
If you ever feel burnt out, I honestly just recommend taking time off of it. You're not gonna lose followers. No one's gonna forget about you. They will live a week without you and yeah, that's what I recommend. So Anusha asked me anything you'd tell your past self, anything you'd do differently. I think something I would tell myself would be, I feel like I've mentioned this in like other interviews with people but I would pretty much tell myself like um, you know right now you're so scared and you feel like everything is against you and like you're not able to do anything you don't have the confidence you're not great enough to do all this but you're actually so capable of doing all these things and the only reason why you're worrying so much is anxiety and yes you have the right to feel all the feelings you're feeling but you're you're gonna do great you know if things don't work out they don't work out there's always something else out there for you and don't stress too much just have fun and live life a little and things just click into place and as for if i would do anything differently i don't think i would i love all the experiences i've been through and i think it's shaped me into the person i am today so Yes. Oddball Illustrations wants to know where do I see apple cheeks in five years? Oh, that is a hard one because if anyone knows me, I don't have a solid plan. I don't really like making plans for 5, 10, 15 years in the future because I'm going to be a whole different person by that time. I'm going to have different dreams, different ambitions. So I don't really want to set a solid goal down but as for like what i want to do in the future i want to one day set up this space it could be like a community where we just all share a studio space and people can come and work there and the front will be a boutique so kind of like pansy um pansy has a shop like that and i really look up to her um because she has like she has like a physical location and I think it's beautiful. Like I just honestly want a space where I can truly like express myself in the way I decorate it, the way I paint it, everything like that. That is like one of the goals of my life. And another one would be to travel and to be able to work while traveling. So that's like also another thing that I'm working towards, but that one's a little harder because I'm kind of scared of traveling alone. So maybe I'll have to find people to go with me. Angel and Hair is wondering if creating art ever feels more like work or a burden now that you rely on it solely. Um, at first it didn't. At first I was still enjoying the process. I was enjoying like creating and making stickers and doing all these things. But I did hit a point during the pandemic where it felt like I was creating to survive because I was... I was nervous, you know, like like the beginning of the pandemic was so scary for everyone and I just felt this urgency of like if i don't make it through this pandemic how am i going to make a living and the creativity wasn't really inside me anymore i was literally just generating work because i needed to survive um these days i'm taking it a little bit slower i do create more for myself and just like in general to be happier with my own work um but yeah there definitely are times where you will feel like it is just work but for me, I always find the passion again over time. Jade Mond said, did you save up before quitting for just in case? I did save up a little bit. I think I had enough in my bank account where I could survive a few months. And I think that's always important, especially when you make such a huge decision in your life, like you're completely changing your career path and you're cutting out like a whole income source that you're no longer gonna be able to collect. So you definitely want to save at least three months um, if you can think you could take off in three months. But I personally am more conservative, so I would rather save six to 12 months if possible. Pen Pals guys asking pros and cons of producing your products yourself versus manufacturers. I personally think if you still don't know like what your audience likes, it's always better to make it yourself, whether that's like cutting your own stickers, making your own own prints or stuff like that because you're able to make a smaller batch 
when you work with manufacturers, you are paying for like the hundreds to thousands quantities. And if one thing doesn't sell well, you don't want to be stuck with an inventory that's not going to sell. So definitely if you're just starting out and you're dabbling, I would recommend making it yourself, seeing what people like, and then eventually when you see a big enough change in like how much you're making and how much people are purchasing, then I think it's time to outsource it. Crystal Cloud is asking, why am I called Apple Cheeks? I feel like this is important because this is my whole brand. Um, when I went to Italy in 2017 with my friends for a study abroad program, I think my friends started calling me Apple Cheeks in Japanese because I always had really red cheeks, um, especially more so when I was younger because when I would present, my cheeks would go bright red. If I exercised, bright red. If I got a little too warm, bright red, my cheeks were always red. And so she called me Apple Cheeks. I translated it and made that into my username because I felt like it was really on brand. I'm just always this anxious little girl that has bright red cheeks. Fruit Jelly asked me, where was there ever a time you doubted yourself? I am constantly doubting myself. To this day, I am still doubting myself, but I do think I am more confident in other aspects. I do feel like experience gives you confidence. And sometimes when I catch myself doubting um, the things I want to do these days, I definitely remind myself like, hey, look, you've accomplished so much already. What's another hurdle in your life? You know, you're going to get past this and eventually it won't seem like such a big deal to you. So yeah, that's how, that's how I see that. My friend Alyssa is asking me how my parents reacted to me quitting my job. I think they're very supportive. They always knew that I kind of wanted to do something like this. They definitely were very shocked when I wanted to quit my job. I think my mom wanted me to move home and like continue my business um, back in my childhood house. But I didn't want to. I kind of wanted to keep living here because I just felt so fulfilled living by myself and learning new things on my own. And I felt like I was growing a lot as a person versus like living with my parents. But yeah, they're definitely very supportive of that obviously they're gonna be really worried and all that but you know like as long as i keep doing what i do and prove myself i think they're still generally pretty happy that i'm doing what i'm doing Lia Dan lawson is asking me how am i doing or like how am i and honestly i right now as we speak i feel like i'm going through another big transition in my life. I've been pretty stable for like the past two years of my life I would say so right now I feel like is a, a time to make another big jump and keep growing in different ways so definitely a lot of hardships and a lot of emotions going on but I know that by the end of it I will be okay and I think that's the most important thing is knowing that you'll always be okay eventually. Emma Verstrepen, sorry if I'm butchering that. She asked me if I'm happier. I am a thousand percent happier, but also a thousand percent sadder. But generally, yes, I am a lot happier. And I'm learning what makes me happy and what doesn't make me happy. And I'm trying to surround myself with that more. I'm trying to figure out the mental health so I know what triggers it and what can bring me out of a funk. Um, but yeah, I would say generally I'm a lot happier these days. Are there some aspects of your old job that you miss? There's definitely a lot of aspects of my old job that I miss, which is just being in a community setting or just like having coworkers and working on projects together. I think that's always something that I wish I still had. And so I'm trying to build that for myself right now. I joined a community of artists that are now here in Vegas and we like to work together. So we do have like a co-working space and it definitely feels a lot happier. A lot of being self-employed is the fact that you have to get used to being alone all the time. And it's a very lonely career path, especially if you live alone as well with like no one else in here. I definitely, think like if you're going to be self-employed to have a good support system around you so that you're able to go to people when you need them and you can't just wallow in your own sadness all the time. 
I'm sorry I wasn't able to get through every single question. This is just like way too many questions for me to answer. But hopefully you learned something from my little TED talk and um, I'm hoping you're inspired to take the first step if you want to do something like this. Um, I think the great thing about YouTube is the fact that we have this community on here to inspire others to you know, pursue their passions, their dreams, their goals, and lift and empower women and etc etc. Thank you for being here and like listening to me and just being such cool people. So I will catch you next week with a vlog. I was taking a break and I feel very good now that I had this break. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you later skaters. Bye. Have a good rest of your day and week and month and year and whatnots. Bye. <laughs>